Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Perceive 2021. Please give a warm welcome to Sheree Joe, PhD, an assistant professor from the University of Toronto, who will be speaking about improving collaboration efficiency for building AI-based software. Welcome to our stage. Hello, everyone. My name is Sheree Joe, and I'm from University of Toronto. My research background is software engineering. Specifically, I'm interested in helping distributed and interdisciplinary software teams to better collaborate from both technical and social aspects. In this talk, I'm gonna cover a few studies that I have been doing to understand and also improve collaboration efficiency for building AI or machine learning based software systems. The main message of this talk is to encourage more frequent collaboration between the AI and software engineering community, between both the industry and academia. I'm sure you are aware of many examples that people are using AI techniques to help with software engineering problems, and we call it AI for SB. For example, code completion features in some IDEs or programming environments that speed up the process of coding application. Software engineering teams also leverage AI techniques to help with debugging. Similarly, OpenAI's GPT-2 and GPT-3 enables developers to build apps with minimum effort. I'm sure you all know this GitHub Copilot that improves the code completion a lot. But in this talk, I'm going to talk more on the other direction of how we might apply software engineering techniques, best practices to help with building AI-based software systems with high quality and efficiently. To start with, let me define what do we mean by AI-based software system. Essentially, there is one or more AI or machine learning components in a whole system. Some common examples like face detection models or speech recognition models on our phone Recently, I have learned that lots of people or a lot of students especially rely on a speech recognition tool called otter.ai to transcribe the Zoom lectures. To build this machine learning model, we tend to think about this traditional view of machine learning pipeline. The output of this pipeline is a well-performed machine learning model. Typically, these three stages are covered by a machine learning course in a university. The focus is often a little bit narrow and specifically about feature engineering, model training, and hyperparameter optimization. It's more model focused. Nowadays, more and more people start to realize that the deployment and maintenance of the machine learning model becomes important. So people come up with ML ops techniques that enables IT operations teams to respond more quickly with a lot less effort. However, this view is still focusing on the model. If we want to build an AI-based software system, this is not the whole picture. We need the entire system, not just the model, for the entire system. There are more quality attributes of the system need to be considered, such as speed, safety, security, scalability, maintainability, and so on. If we zoom out, this could potentially be the structure of the production system. What a previous pipeline view is missing is interaction with the rest of the comp components of the system, the interaction between the data scientists who are focusing on developing the model with the rest of the team. In another word, to build an AI-based software system, the team is interdisciplinary. Multiple team members with different backgrounds need to collaborate together. Our study mostly focused on the collaboration between data scientists and software engineers. In one of the studies we recently conducted for understanding the collaboration challenges within a team, and I'm going to explain more in the second half of my talk, we observed that lots of organizations that have separate teams for the product and for the model. They have different backgrounds, they don't speak the same language, and they have different expectations and priorities. Sometimes they're not aware of each other's concerns. For example, when we talk to model team, we've heard complaints about Product team may not identify what data is needed for building a model and commit to unrealistic requirements based on available data. Also, it's common that product team is lacking of machine learning literacy to understand data science concerns. At the same time, we also heard complaints from the product team saying model team tend to focus on requirements relevant for the model, but neglect requirements for the product such as expectations for usability. Sometimes 
they have to rewrite the code because the code quality does not meet the requirements. With these observations, especially the last one, as a software engineering researcher, this reminds us that we have studied similar problems before. For example, improving code quality, automated code refactoring are something software engineering community have studied for years. Then the question rises naturally for us, is, is there a chance that we could bring some software engineering techniques to data scientists, but also customize them for the challenges they are having? To give you a concrete example, computational notebooks are widely used by data scientists to conduct exploratory programming and try different solutions to find the best performed machine learning model. Especially, data scientists can write a few lines of code in a cell and execute it. You could gradually add more cells to finish the machine learning pipeline. However, research found that although the current design of the notebook is good for exploration, it also leads to problems. For example, after data scientists finished experiments, after a while, they forget how they get to this result due to the random execution order. Also, since there is no good way for version control, it is hard for them to trace back their decisions. Another problem that comes up consistently from the notebook studies is that software engineers complaining about the poor quality of the code in there. Well, this is not necessarily a fair assessment because they have different goals. Data scientists use notebook to explore ideas and the goal is not to write high quality production code. But according to our interviews and discussions and literatures, you will find many examples of buggy code, duplicate code, tangled or scattered code or dead code. Also, the code is lack of documentation, things like this. Again, since it's just exploration using notebook, it might not make sense to clearly document everything and clean the code carefully. But since there are cases software engineers have dealt with for a long time, maybe we could help a bit. So in one of our studies, we start with identifying buggy code in notebook. Specifically, we are working on identifying bugs for data wrangling code. This is a collaboration with Chen Yang and Jane and Christian. Typical data wrangling steps include removing relevant columns, converting types, filling missing values, and extracting and normalizing important features from raw data. Data wrangling code is often dense, repetitive, error prone, and generally not well supported in a commonly used computational notebooks environment. Data scientists reportedly spend a significant amount of their time in their daily routines on data wrangling. Moreover, it is easy to introduce subtle bugs when reusing and adopting existing code, which results in reduced model quality. To give you a concrete example, here is an excerpt of a real data wrangling code from a Kaggle competition, and there are three notebook cells. And what this code does is it transforms the size column, converting K and M to numbers, and replacing values with device by mean value. However, there's a subtle bug in this code. A capitalized K in this line results in converting K into one instead of 1,000. For example, the code will convert 670K to 670 rather than the expected result. In this case, what data scientists commonly do is frequently injecting print statements at beginning and the end of the cell, or in a new cell to inspect data samples. Typically, it will show us a few rows and manually compare them before and after the data wrangling step. However, we saw that quickly become overwhelming and tedious with large amounts of data, especially if data triggering problematic behavior is not part of the first few rows. In this case, you can see there are only cases about M's and varies with device, which makes the incorrect transformation of K ending rows difficult to spot. Facing this problem, we designed Wrangle Doc, which can summarize what effect code has on specific input data in a form of a data frame, highlighting representative changes to rows and columns of tabular data. Using the same example we showed before, Wrangle code can identify the data frames or tabular variables that flows in and out of the code fragment to identify which important variables are read and written in a code fragment. 
We can also provide a concise summary of the transformation for each change data frame using a domain specific language we designed. We also show sample data from the modified data frames, especially comparing a data frame's value before and after the sale. Finally, we group roles that take the same path at branching decisions in transformation code, showing one example each and highlighting the number of other roles that take the same path. So in this case, you can quickly find this example is wrong. Here's an overview of our method. I won't have time to cover the detail, but if you're interested, please check out our paper. We evaluate WrangleDoc for effectiveness, usefulness, and correctness. Especially, we recruited 20 participants and asked them to identify bugs in notebooks with or without using WrangleDoc. And the results show that WrangleDoc could significantly improve participants' performance as it helps understanding process in general, as well as exposed on euro cases in a clear form. That is one example that we try to apply and customize software engineering techniques to help data scientists to do debugging. Another interesting problem we are currently looking at is having better version control support. As the computational notebook is designed in a linear view, it is common that people explore alternatives for certain machine learning stage in a following cell. Or if the platform support, they could store different versions for exploring in different notebooks. However, a better way we are thinking is to have a structural view of the code according to the machine learning stage, which could support comparison, versioning much easier and straightforward. So there's a lot more that we are thinking we could do to improve data science tools. However, tooling cannot address all the problems. Sometimes the challenges are collaboration related, education related, where people don't speak the same language. It's not just one help the other. When building AI-based software systems, experts with different backgrounds, they need to better collaborate together. Next, I'm going to show you another example about how we systematically understand the collaboration challenges within the team for building AI-based software systems. This is a collaboration with Nadia, Grace, and Christian. Recall the examples that I showed before, we heard complaints from each groups about the other. It is actually part of this study. Essentially, we interviewed 45 participants from 28 organizations, from st small startups to large big tech companies that have diverse roles in these projects, including data scientists, software engineers, and managers. We observed different structures of the organization and corresponding challenges. For example, this is one of the organizations that we talked with. They are building a fraud detection features in an existing product. You can see that the management team and product team are working together to come up with product requirements. Then they also derive model requirements to the model team. And model teams and data teams are working together to collect training data. We observed that lack of machine learning literacy in product team and project managers lead to unrealistic expectations of model capability. Similarly, model team found they need to educate product team about capability of machine learning techniques to set correct expectations. Here's another team that we interviewed. They are developing an OCR for native language. OCR is optical character recognition. And essentially, they are building the machine learning model first and then build a product around the model later. As you can see, the management team, model team, and data team are working together to develop the machine learning model. And then they talk with the product team, ask them to build a product around. In this kind of organizations, product requirements are usually shaped by model capabilities after the initial model has been created rather than being defined upfront. We also observed challenges. For example, they found they need to educate clients about capability of ML techniques. Also, when they are focusing on the model development first, they tend to focus on the requirements relevant for the model only, but neglect requirements for the product, such as expectations for usability and other type of non-functional requirements. And this is an example that I've shown you before. 
overall, we've observed three patterns around requirements elicitation. And the first example is product first trajectory. It's like the first example that they already have an existing product, then they come up with a new idea to add a machine learning related components on top of that. And second example is model first trajectory, meaning people have an idea of the machine learning components, and then they ask the product team to put a product around that. And we also observed two organizations, they are having this parallel trajectory, meaning they develop the model and the product at the same time. There are many other interesting stories we've heard, but I don't have time to cover in this talk. But one important result is that our observations suggest four things that would benefit from more attention when building AI-based software systems. The first one is documentation. Clearly, documenting expectations between teams is important. Traditional interface documentation familiar to software engineers may be a good starting point, but practices for documenting model requirements, data expectations, and a short model quality are not well established. Recent suggestions like model cards are a good starting point for encouraging better, more standardized production of machine learning components, but capture only selected qualities. In software engineering, there are many works about automated code summarization. However, when generating documents for machine learning models, data sets, these techniques cannot be directly used and applied. We need your expertise to help us better understand the problem space and design customized and better solutions. The second theme is processes. A lot of people don't like processes. They think it is time consuming and low efficiency. While a focus on the product and overall process may be delayed, neglecting it entirely invites the kind of problems reported by our participants. Machine learning with its more science-like process challenges traditional software development life cycle. It seems clear that product requirements cannot be established without involving data scientists for model prototyping. And often it may be advisable to adopt a model first trajectory to reduce risks. Again, we need your help to better define the processes for building AI software systems specifically. The third theme is engineering. I haven't shown you in my previous example, but we observed that with attention focused on machine learning innovation, many organizations seem to underestimate the engineering effort required to turn a model into a product to be op operated and maintained reliably. When the model team has responsibilities requiring substantial engineering work, we observed that some dissatisfaction when its members were assigned undesired responsibilities. Data scientists preferred engineering support rather than needing to do everything themselves, but can find it hard to convince management to hire engineers on a project. Especially in small teams, data scientists report struggling with the complexity of the typical machine learning infrastructure. In contrast, when deployment is the responsibility of software engineers in a product team, some of these engineers report problems integrating the models due to insufficient knowledge on model context or domains. And in several organizations, we heard about software engineers performing machine learning tasks without having enough machine learning understanding. Arguably, machine learning increases software complexity and makes engineering practices such as data quality checks, deployment automation, and testing in production even more important. We ensure that the machine learning and the non-machine learning parts of the projects have sufficient engineering capability and foster product and operations thinking from the start. The last theme that we observed is communication. Many issues are rooted in miscommunication between participants with different backgrounds. Participants frequently describe communication issues arising from different terminologies used by members from different backgrounds. For example, data scientists may refer to prediction accuracy as performance, where many software engineers refer it to response time. Additionally, we observe that data scientists often work in isolation in all types of organizational structures. In such setting, data scientists often work in isolation with weak requirements without understanding the larger context. Seriously engaging with others only during integrations when problems may surface. 
For example, one of our participants reported a problem when product and model team had different assumptions about the expected inputs and the issue could only be identified after a lot of back and forth between teams at the late stage of the project. To facilitate interdisciplinary collaboration, education is key, including AI literacy for software engineers and managers and even customers but also training software engineers to understand data science concerns is important. Product team cannot identify product requirements alone. Instead, product and model team, they need to interact frequently to explore what is achievable. The ideas of T-shaped professionals, meaning deep expertise in one area, broad knowledge of the others, can provide guidance for hiring and training. They can also be beneficial for processes and communication. So these are the four themes that we thought could benefit from more attention when building AI-based software systems. To summarize, I've talked about the overview of building AI-based software systems is not just about the model, but also many other components around it. It means building such systems requires collaboration among interdisciplinary experts. As a software researcher, we all observed some chances that we could help to apply and adjust software engineering techniques, best practices to help improve the coding environment for data scientists. We also empirically study the challenges when building such systems and derive some guidance and suggestions. But again, machine learning with this more science-like process challenges traditional software development lifecycle. The classic software engineering best practices cannot be directly applied. So we need your help to better understand the space and design better solutions. But more importantly, let's collaborate on both directions, software engineering for AI, AI for software engineering. Let's help each other to build better and high quality AI-based software systems together. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Sheree. It was a pleasure. A big round of applause from our virtual audience. We will see you at our next session.